I mentioned at the end of the last segment that in this country we have a lot of existing laws in place that in, s- in some cases don't get wholeheartedly enforced. And there's a new effort coming out of Washington, a bill introduced uh, by our own Representative Raul Labrador from here in Idaho, along with Bob Goodlatte, who's one of the congressman's colleagues in uh, in the House of Representatives. And it's called the Davis-Oliver Act. And we're going to spend a few minutes this morning, first of all, talking with Representative Labrador. It's 817. Bill Colley with you as well on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. 38 right now. The snow has cleared, though. That's a good thing. First of all, Representative Labrador, welcome back to the program. Great to be on your show, Bill. Thank you. I, I was reading through some of the details on this this morning, and I highlighted some of the things you mentioned in your statement with this. Uh, first of all, that reference to existing immigration law, and you went on in the same paragraph to mention that the previous administration ideologically driven to shut down immigration enforcement. In other words, there was a clear conscious effort on the part of the previous administration to soft pedal this, and you're looking just to put the the teeth back in what was originally there. Correct. So you have two issues. They decided not to enforce the laws that were already in the books, and you have already seen the the, the Trump administration enforcing those laws, and that has made a huge difference. But what we want to do through legislation is take away some of the power of the executive to not enforce those laws. They decided that it wasn't important to, to re, in essence, protect the sovereignty of the United States. And what you saw, you saw a huge influx of illegal immigrants coming to the border. As soon as Trump was elected and he said that he was going to start enforcing the laws, you actually saw a decrease in illegal immigration. Some estimates are as much as 60% of people, of decrease, a 60% decrease at the border of illegal immigration. That's a huge impact on the United States. So we want to do that. We also want to crack down on the sanctuary city policies. As you know, some of these cities are deciding that they don't want to contact ICE or other law enforcement agencies that are dealing with immigration and that they're just releasing illegal aliens, criminal aliens into the community. That's just wrong. That's just plain wrong. So we're fighting. We're we're cracking down on that. We're also enhancing our public safety and strengthening our, our national security by by giving them the tools that are necessary to provide to do expedited removal of people that that may have terrorist ties with terrorist nations. And then one of the things that's really important about the bill is we're going to improve our visa security. The the first line of defense that we have is is our visa security. It's our it's our visa processing. That's where we allow people to come to the United States illegally. Sometimes we're just not catching them uh at the right time. We're not catching the people that that should not be entering to the, the United States. So we're enhancing that and making it more robust so we can have more proper vetting of the people that are coming into the United States. When you reference the sanctuary cities, and obviously none in Idaho, but we're relatively close, as, if you look at the map, to a lot of places that have these and people travel. And I think that's the big concern if you live in a place like Idaho, somebody who's on the road could easily be coming out of one of these coastal cities or somewhere to the south and we're going to have to deal with it one way or another. There's that spillover, if you will. Uh, absolutely. And and it, and it's important because, as you know, if you release them in the community, they can go anywhere. They could come to Idaho. But more importantly, I, I think the, the, if you want a proper immigration system, and you know, Bill, that I, I want immigration. I, I actually believe that immigration is important to the United States. So I'm not one of those who thinks that there should be no immigration to the United States. But if you want a proper immigration system, you have to make sure that we're properly vetting the people that are coming here, that we have a system that works for the 21st century, a system that, that allows the appropriate people to come to the United States, the people that we need in the United States, people who are not going to be a burden to the community and to the society. And we also want to make sure that people understand that we're a nation of laws. The reason you have so many people trying to come to the United States is because we're the greatest nation on the earth, and the reason we're the greatest nation on the earth is because we're a nation of laws. We're a nation that people know that you're going to be treated the same regardless of your status, your standards, your uh, whoever you are, that the law is supreme in the United States. And, and by failing to recognize and failing to uh, enforce the law, we're actually diminishing the strength of the United States, whether that's done in San Francisco or Idaho. It doesn't matter that it's just San Francisco and places like that that are sanctuary cities. 
they are actually diminishing the strength and the power of the United States, and we need to make it stronger so people can be proud of being here, they can feel safe, secure in their nation. It's 22 and we're speaking with Representative Raul Labrador on Top Story on KLIX with Bill Colley, and we're at 38. Some of the folks on the other side, and I've seen the statistics that immigrants, percentage-wise, obviously don't commit as many crimes as, let's say, people who were native-born Americans. However, uh, this is named after two police officers who were killed by people who were here illegally. And I always make the, uh, the counter-argument, it wasn't as if someone else would have been designated to kill those officers that day if these people hadn't been here. Uh, and, and and I think that that's important to remember. It's, it's not necessarily the percentage. It's that some of these people do add to crime. Well, so, so that's an important point, very important point. So number one, you're absolutely right that these are crimes that would not have been committed by somebody else. They were crimes that, you know, these two officers lost their lives, and many people have lost their lives because we have people here without proper documentation, and we can't get those lives back. So that's the most important issue. But number two, that data that you're citing is, is incorrect. The data shows that immigrants may have a lower uh, rate of crime activity but remember, these are legal immigrants. These are people who have been properly vetted to come to the United States. There is no data about illegal immigrants in the United States, no data at all. So anyone who goes out there and, and says that, that they have data that shows that illegal immigrants are actually more safe and, and, and less prone to violence and crime, they're not telling you the truth because that data does not exist. If we can get over all of these headlines of the day, because I think there's some concern here in the flyover country, if you'll call it that, or I'll call it that, that we have so many distractions going on right now that a lot of these bills, which are great ideas, could get bogged down in all of that. Or will will business go on as usual and you'll be able to get this worked? Well, we're going to do our job. We're going to try to pass, you know, this legislation is going to have, an, uh, it was introduced yesterday. We're going to have a hearing on Thursday. Next week, we're going to have a hearing and, and introduction of legislation uh, on refugees, and we, we can talk about that in the next couple of weeks. We're going to do what we need to do to make sure that we make America safe and secure. We're not going to let the media distract us on, on our efforts. However, it makes it more difficult because that's what the, all the media wants to talk about. It's ironic that the media had no problem with all the issues that the Obama administration had and many of the scandals that happened. They seem to just just kept saying, you know, why can't we walk and chew gum at the same time? But now they complain that we want to walk and chew gum at the same time. And, and, and of course, the media is never going to be the friend of the Republican Party. It's never going to be the friend of conservatives. And, and we just need to accept that and just keep moving and do, doing the work that the American people elected us to do. The, the worst failing that we can have as a Congress is if we allow these things to bog us down and, and we fail to keep the promises that we made. Some of some conservatives, and I thought about the statements made the other day by Ann Coulter, although I, I don't know, extremist conservative, she could be described a lot of different ways, but she made a comment about she's losing faith in Trump because there's no border fence. But I think in a previous discussion we had, you pointed out it doesn't have to be a physical barrier. There are many things we can do electronically and other things that, that create almost a virtual fence. Absolutely. And we need to, there are areas where we need actual fences. And, and I think what Ann Coulter was talking about is that there has been no movement in, in at least completing the areas that where we can have actual fencing and starting the areas where we can do the virtual fences. There's so much more that we can do. I understand her frustration, and I think it's good that he's getting some pressure from some of his allies to complete the job. This is why he got elected. He got elected because people were frustrated with immigration. He got elected because people didn't feel safe and secure. He got elected because he promised to, to build a fence and to make America safer. Those things are so important, and I think it's imperative within the next two years that we, have, we, we, we make the, the proper down payment to the American people it, on those promises and start, and, and start the completion of, of those promises. I think that the American people will forgive him if it's not completed. I think they're going to have a harder time if we haven't even started on the process. We've got about a minute to go. Uh, I don't mean to throw you a curveball, but I, I watched uh, one of our members of our delegation last night on Martha McCallum's program, and uh, this morning Senator Risch's comments uh, are all over the Internet about uh, what happened with the leaks coming out of uh, the White House. 
Uh, it, it seems he struck a nerve and really a chord with the American people with his comments. What was your take on that? Well, it's interesting. I, I think the the people who keep leaking this information, they have committed a crime. I, I agree with Senator Rich completely. Uh, but we, but we need to make sure that, that, you know, the president, I think, needs to do himself a little bit of service, too, and stay off of the Twitter a little bit. I think sometimes he makes things worse by going on Twitter and trying to defend himself because we just need to let the process work. Uh, and, and I think that, you know, he, he's almost stepping on his message. If you think about what's happening in America right now, unemployment rates going down, consumer confidence is going up, the number of jobs is going up. We've, we are actually more secure. We have better relationships with China. We're developing better relationships with our foreign partners. Think about all the good things that are happening. And the media is not letting that message actually get out. So we, they, they need to have a little bit more discipline in, in, in the White House to make sure that we have the proper messaging going out so we can, so all of us can, to, can, can uh, get that message out to the American people. Well, Representative, always good to speak with you, and we look forward to your next visit. Thank you so much. Great talking to you. You too, sir. Thank you. Uh, Representative Raul Labrador joining us this morning on News Radio 1310. KLIX and newsradio 1310.com. And about, oh, one minute before the break, I've got to mention we've got a couple of very special guests coming in with us from the Idaho Immunization Coalition. They're coming up between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Uh, they're replacing our visit uh, with Trip Family Medicine today, although I'd like to point out uh, our good friends at Trip Family Medicine also do immunizations, child immunizations, and uh, you can reach them, of course. Uh, the doctor's office is fairly visible if you drive down Fillmore Street on the north side of the city, directly across from the main post office, you can't miss the signage any longer. Dr. Tripp's office is still looking for new patients, as well as uh, often they can see you on the very same day if you're a patient and you call up in the morning and you have a medical issue. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Quickly, I didn't chat with uh, with Representative Labrador about his filing to run for governor because, of course, we chatted about that two weeks ago. And now that he's filed, it's somewhat old news, and he has said there'll be a formal announcement coming probably next week, and at that point we'll have a bit more of an opportunity to talk to him on that front versus the legislative front. It's 8.30. We're at 38. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and NewsRadio1310.com.